There we go. All right, let me have them in there. I'll move it all this way. All right, so you guys, I posted the videos for last week, uh, labeled them. If anybody have, uh, just let me check with you. If they're supposed to be helpful, any, any comments how I can make them more helpful? I looked at them and the board was small, but it was readable. The screen came across. And I thought rather than just me uh, presenting, I thought it would be better if I did the class because if something's not clear, people can ask a question. I've never seen where one person has a question. So let me know how that works out if it's worthwhile. And the reason they're good for 202 is 201 has a YouTube video on every topic. 202 does not. So this will be the video for the course. Okay. Yeah, and it just do keep me posted if there's anything I need to do different on that. So just, you know, it's worth, worth doing. All right, should we get on to chapter 2 then, or chapter 11? Yeah. Okay, so for chapter 11, we're talking about liabilities, right? Now. And of course, you know, liability is debt of a business. Now, here's kind of a, don't forget, the, uh, the way this presented, and I thought that, uh, I thought the textbook did a good job of presenting it. It's past, present, and future. Okay. So basically what it is, it's a past transaction. Okay. That creates a present obligation. to be paid in the future. So, in other words, uh, if you buy something from your supplier, then uh, you bought it in the past, you've got a present obligation to pay it, and you'll pay it in the future, right? That'd be accounts uh, payable. Anybody who needs to send the roll? All right, here you are. Junior, I'll hand this over to you. Okay. Um, and Junior, when you're done, do you want to just hand it back this way? Okay. Um, Anyway, so now here's an interesting thing is, you know when the Yankees hired A-Rod and they agreed to pay him $30 million a year, something like that, it was quite a, it was a, quite a number. Anyway, is that a liability? And the answer is no. Now they're going to pay him, but it's contingent upon working. So at this point in time, that would not be a liability. Now it has to be disclosed in the note, because it's, let's face it, $30 million is material no matter who you are, right? Or whatever, it was a, quite a large number. Is it bigger than 30 million? Yeah. How is it not an obligation or a liability? Uh, they don't, at this point in time, they, now they, if he works, then they've got to pay him. So you're talking about works, just at the beginning of the contract negotiation is what you're referring to? Yeah, exactly. So you're tearing you, into the negotiation, you're taking the 30 million as the offer, mm -hmm. but until it's accepted. Not quite. It's more the idea that if he works, He's earned the money, they owe it to him. Until he works, it's not a liability. So for instance, suppose he got busted for drug use, okay, and his contract expired. There's no liability, because it's he the liability incur, occurs when he um, works, when he plays a ball game. He plays a ball game, they owe him X number of dollars. Until he plays that ball game, they don't really owe him anything. But the contract says, if he plays the ball game, then here's how much we owe you. So the fact that he signed that contract, now they have an obligation to pay him if he plays the ball game. No ball game, no obligation. So that's an example of where you, there's no past transaction, he didn't play anything, it isn't a present obligation, and they won't pay him in the future. However, when he plays the game, that will. Tiffany. Okay, so what about recently there was the whole thing where the um, battleground school district board um, person or whatever, like something happened or whatever, and she had to like resign, mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. still got the like it was like four, like four thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, dollars. Yeah, that's. And so there was no transaction. Now, the name for that is what's called a contingent liability for that particular one, and that's a little bit different. So I'm going to mark this thing before I forget while it's here. So what happens with that, that's a little different, is a contingent liability, is a possible, is a potential liability that can turn into a real liability should something happen. So in this case, that would be a contingent liability. So what it would say is the fact that if I get fired, I, I don't know what it is, but suppose there is something like, if this lady is let go 
prior to Section 50 day, you agree to pay your Section such amount. That's a contingent liability. Okay. In that it's a potential liability that you're for real liability given some of that. Okay. The one with A Rod is different. Um, it's the idea that if A Rod paid, if A Rod plays, then we'll pay him such amount. But until he pays, we don't owe him anything. Okay? All right. Now, and of course, basically, don't forget a current liability. Current liability is paid within a year. Or what? Or less. Operating. Or an operating cycle, whichever is greater. Whichever is greater. And I'll just leave out the word, just whichever is greater. Okay? And then you have a long term liability. So if a current liability is paid within a year in operating cycle, whichever is longer was a long-term liability, it's due beyond a year. Or an operating cycle, whichever is longer. And okay, I'll leave that phrase out if you guys just okay, remember it okay. Alright, now sometimes sometimes we have what are called known liabilities. And of course, a known liability means you know who you're going to pay, how much you're going to pay, and when you're going to pay it. And it's things like accounts payable, sales tax payable, um, unearned revenues, unearned revenues, uh, etc. Okay? Let's start with sales tax payable. So here's how sales tax payable work. There's a $6,000 sale. Okay? And there's a 5% sales tax. <coughs> and of course, that means that the sales tax itself will be Now don't forget, a sales tax, now it's a retail tax. It's a, re it's a, a retailer, char uh, and, and of course this retailer is acting as an agent for the county, state, wh whoever it is, is, and they collect the tax from the customer. So in this case, here's what the journal entry will look like. Cash will be debited for $6,300. And where do we get the $6,300? Well, there's a $600 <coughs> sale. There was a $300 sales tax, so your customer owed you $6,300, okay? <coughs> sales is credited for $6,000, and you have a sales tax payable of $300. Now, sales tax payable, what kind of an account is sales tax payable? It's a liability. <laughs> it's really not your money. You collect it from the customer, and then you have to send it in. And the way these things are set up, <coughs> almost all these things are set up, is they'll ask you to send it in so, uh, at, at, at various periods. So if you are a Safeway, often you send it in every second or third day because you accumulate it so quickly. If you're a small business, often you send it in quarterly, monthly, quarterly. So they'll ask you to send it in such that you don't accumulate too much. That means that worries them, but not so often that it becomes burdensome. So if you're something like Safeway, you send it in every other day because you've accumulated such a huge number. They don't want you okay. And if you're a small business, it can be, it can be, if you're a really small business, it can be quarter. And that's how they set it up. Normally what they'll do is a brand new business, they'll have something called a look back period. They're not a brand new business, but and they'll take a look at maybe the previous year. And then that will determine how often you should send it in. Okay? All right. Any sort of a prepayment, any sort of advance payment that you'll earn later is honored revenue. Because if you, like if you have a uh, ticket sales, like you buy a season ticket, then 
that's from the company that sells you the season ticket, that's a liability simply because when you receive the advance payment, it's not your money, you incur the debt. Okay? So, we're talking about honor and revenue. And honor and revenue is a prepayment. I thought I'd just try this to see what it did. I think I better go back to the other one. Honor and revenue, we're talking about a prepayment. That's later earned. So in this case, it is a ticket sale. So Beyonce sold five millions in tickets for eight concert. So on June thirtieth, cash is debited for five million, and unearned ticket revenue is credited. For five million. Okay, so this is when Beyonce sells the concert tickets. Okay, that's for eight concerts. So if we have five million divided by eight, every concert is worth sixty six six hundred and twenty five thousand. So on October first, she performs a concert. So October thirty first. At that point in time, she's earned six hundred twenty-five thousand. So unearned ticket revenue, which is a liability account, will now be debited for the six hundred and twenty-five thousand that she's earned. The credit will be in revenue, and it's called ticket revenue. And that would be the six hundred and twenty-five thousand. So the way this works is, when you receive the prepayment, you debit cash and you credit the liability on honor and revenue account. When you earn the money, then you debit the liability because you don't know it. You've earned it, and you credit revenue because you've earned it. That makes sense. Yeah. Where did you get the eight for up at the top? It's a given. Okay. And what it says is she received five million for eight concerts. Okay. And that just like. Uh, it's just a given, okay? All right, we have notes paid, okay? So, don't forget a note is an unconditional, so a note is an unconditional promise to pay, so it's a promissory note. Okay, and a promissory note is an unconditional promise to pay. So, what happens in this particular example is the accounts payable is $600. And this person calls up the supplier and says, listen, I'm going to pay it. I'm a little bit short of cash, so I need some time. And the supplier says, fine. Uh, we'll need to transfer that to a notes payable. And the reason is, is because the notes payable, or the notes payable, is easier to collect than the accounts payable. Okay? So, specifically, in October, August 23rd, there's a $600 accounts payable that gets debited. And this person says, listen, I'll send you $100, okay? And we'll put the nest on a note. So actually, a guy should never talk and write at the same time. And I'm really glad when I do things like that because people it really perks people up and it makes it memorable. Now you'll remember. Okay. Alright, does that make sense? Okay. And uh, and uh, all right. So here's what it is, and this what happens in this thing is the supplier says, I need a note. So you credit notes payable, it's a liability. The person who owes the money agrees to send the $100, and then the accounts payable is removed. So this is converted into that, less the, the, uh, the payment. Does that make sense? Yeah. How come, yes, how come, how come notes payable is even an accounts payable? 
it's easier to collect. It's an unconditioned promise to pay. So an accounts payable is certainly collectible, right? But maybe you can say, well, I didn't receive the goods, right? Or the goods were damaged, or whatever. There's just a lot of leeway. When you sign a note, it's an unconditional promise to pay, and it's just really hard to get out. Of. Yeah. And it and it's uh, it's easier to collect on, and it, and the collectability is is uh, shorter because there's just less proof, less of a written proof. There's a, Michael, is that the hand? Okay. Do, do, do. Most people don't have interest to open. They do. Yeah. So and there's some interest involved there too. Not not normally. Switch it to mm -hmm. It could even be similar to the master promissory note that you signed if you use student loans. Mm -hmm. so it's an unconditional promise to pay regardless of what mm -hmm. you got. Of course, and the thing that's unique about that is you can't even discharge it through uh, bankruptcy. There's a lot of notes you can. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. And they often and they often do have interest. And of course the other thing is, you know, if you may, I do I buy a car, often it's secured with a note. Uh, a light, a lot of bank loans often secured with a note. Yep. And they're interest bearing. In fact, that interest bearing, let us let me go ahead and follow that. And uh, so now what happens on this thing is, um, okay, all right. Now what happens on this thing is, so now what happens on this thing is a 60 day note, it's a 60 day note. So now on October 22nd, it's paid. So in this case, if we have it, so basically what it is, it's a 60-day, 12% note, okay, all right. So in this case, if, 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 the way you figure interest, it equals principal times rate times time, right? So in this case, it's a $500 note at 12%, and this will be 60 360ths. Now, we had we used the same book last, uh, qu last uh, quarter, right? So you know what's with the 360? It's a banker's year, okay? So on the quiz, on the test, they'll always use a 360-day year, okay? All right, so in this case, the amount of interest that accrued within those uh, 60 days was $10, okay? So interest equals principal times rate times time, so it's a $500 note, 12% interest, and 60, 360 days, that's how long it was, okay? So it's the number of days over a year, in this case it'll always be a bank period, it'll always be 360 in this book. In this Okay, and this was used up until, I don't know, less than 10 years ago, whatever it is, time flies, it's hard to judge, but up to 10 years ago, they used the banker's year. And the pretext for using the banker's year is that it was easier to work with than 365, but that's not true anymore when you've got calculators in Excel. But they did keep it, and of course, it's slightly to the bank's favor. Not much, just a little bit. But if thousands of transactions over, over centuries, it adds up. You, you, you thought that you thought that rounding it up every fraction of a penny, every sale was something, right? And we're only talking about years. These guys are talking centuries. Yeah. Well, the reason I was concerned about it because it's relative to what? Um, there's other ways to find savings if you streamline operations or something like that. Well, you just make it every way you can. I think is more the point. Yeah. You know, here, there, that sort of thing. Yeah. Can you sh and what? Temshish. Temshish. Yeah, temshish. What's that? I'm not sure what that means. We don't need to know about all those other ways to make money. Oh, I see. <laughs> teasing him. No, but the, but the point's what I, the point's taken. It seems like a minor thing, but you can make it here and make it. So in this case, if it was a sale, they ground up the nearest penny there, and then they have this interest in the 360, so a few more pennies there. It adds up. All right. Okay. So in this case, here's where they. Uh, convert the, uh, the, account, the note pay, accounts payable to the note payable. Now here's what they pay it. So when they pay it, the note payable is written off, so you debit the liability. Interest expense, of course, will also be a debit. OK. 
okay, will be a debit of $10, and the total cash you spend will be adding the two together, so that's a credit to cash for $510. So here's where they convert it into accounts payable, and here's where they pay it. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. So we're the company that can't pay the 600. Exactly. Okay. We're the company that can't pay the 600. So an account, if I've been reversing those? Yeah. I, a little. I didn't I mean to, I've exactly got to watch sure. that. So an accounts payable means we borrowed from our supplier, we converted it into a note payable, and here we're paying it off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Now. Let's go do a little bit of a different one. So now what you do is you borrow money from a bank. And I'm going to, I, I need to conserve my board space, but I'm going to move over here because this is too confusing. So you borrow money from a bank. Okay. And you borrow $2,000. Okay. That's a 12% note. And it's the 60 days. Okay. Now what happens here is on okay, and it works the same way. So in this case, what you do is on September 30th, when you borrow it, you debit cash for the 2000 and you credit notes payable of the 2000. Now, on October, November 29th, 60 days later, you pay it. And so it's principal times rate times time. So now the principal is $2,000. The rate is 12%. And this is also a 360 day year. So now the interest for this is $40. So when you pay it, notes payable will be removed from the books with a debit. And so this note payable plus that note payable. You have interest expense of $40. And you add the two together. That comes to 2,040. That's a credit to cash. So here's what it looks like when you pay back the money borrowed from the bank. Okay. Now, let's make this a little bit different. Instead of borrowing it on September 30th, let's say you borrowed it on Let's say what you did is you borrowed it on December 16th. So now on December 16th, what you do is you borrow $2,000, okay? 12% for 60 days. And I'm going to move this over here because I think this will look better if I stack these. It'll be more clear if I make these. Up. So what you do is you buy us a $2,000. You borrow $2,000 for 60 days. Okay, at 12%. So on 2011, we have December 16. Okay, so let me let me start out with this. So on December 16th, you have a cash of 2,000, and you have a note payable of 2,000. Then on December 31, what you have here. So December 31, you have the end of the year. So this is an adjustment. And so December has 31 days, 16th is the date you borrow, there's 15 days of interest. So this is the, December has 31 days, the date of the note is the 16th, and so there's 15 days of interest. Okay, so it's principal times rate times time? $10. $10, $10. okay. So, I'm going to put it in here just to be sure. So it's uh, it's two thousand dollars, right? right? Times twelve percent times fifteen three hundred and sixtieths, and that came out to ten dollars. So you have an adjusting interest at the end of the fiscal year, 
And so there's interest expense. That will be a debit of $10. And at that point in time, it's interest payable of $10. And of course, this is an accrued expense, right? Yeah. So when you make the adjustment, mm -hmm. do we need to have a line item showing the adjustment entry in the journal? Well, what it, yeah, normally all adjustments are just done together. You just start out with the word adjustments and you adjust all the accounts that get adjusted. Then when you post this from the journal to the ledger, you know that it has that column in there that says PR. descriptions? Well, not the PR, but there's a column in the, in the ledger that says, adjust, it says uh, descriptions. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them are blank. If some of these, and I hope I'm answering your question, and well, so, but, but what goes in the ledger are adjusting, closing, reversing, correcting. Right, yeah. and what I'm saying is on the actual journal entry, so we've got on December 16th, cash, no payable, mm -hmm. but then we realize it's end of the year, 30, the 31st yeah. comes in, so we've got December 31st. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have December 31st adjustment entry and then itemize them? Mm -hmm. so okay. Exactly right. So uh, hopefully this answers your question. It, it, uh, normally what you'll do is you'll just write the word adjustment, and below that then you just do all the adjustments. Mm -hmm. And if you do it that way, then there's no more, uh, there's no need for any, uh, thank you very much, Junior. There's no need for any other exclama explanations. But am I, 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 Michael, am I answering yeah, your question? Yeah, no, you are. Okay. If I'm not, I'm going to move this up here. There's the end. All right, that'll take it to the end. Okay. So in that case, so in that case, and then when, and then 60 days later, on February 14th, and that will be in 2012, you pay it. So, now the interest expense will be debited for $30, okay? And so, and where that works is if 50, if it's a 60-day note, and 15 days is worth 10, that leaves 45 days left, and th this will be, if, if 15 days is worth 10, 45 days will be three times greater, so it'll be worth 30. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you could have figured it by putting 45 over 360 and got 30, or 45 is three times 15, so it'll be three times greater. <coughs> you know, the same numbers. You go okay with that? Anybody want to see what worked out or anything? Okay. All right. So in that case, then you have interest expense of 30. You'll have interest payable of 10. And that's this is where that came from. You have no payable of 2,000. And this is where that came from. You add all those together, it comes to 2040, and that will be a credit to cash. Does that make sense? 